Association of African Universities. Greetings from the Secretariat of the Association of African Universities headquartered in Accra, Ghana. I am Ajiman Otredako and I'm delighted to be part of the Pedandragogy Workshop 1 organized by the Uniband Quality Assurance on the theme Unlocking the Power of Effective Teaching and Learning. I'll be speaking to you today on promoting curriculum review for student-centric learning, enhancing quality education in Africa. Let me begin by sharing that education is the foundation of societal progress and high quality education system is essential for a country's development. Continuous progress in the education system is more important than ever in Africa. The encouragement of curriculum review with an emphasis on generating student-centric learning experiences is a crucial part of this advancement. This presentation will share the importance and how necessary it is to encourage curriculum revision in order to improve the quality of education in Africa. According to Osibo and Novak in 2012 and 2010, meaningful learning occurs when a student has been able to internalize information in the long-term memory state. The student who has meaningfully learned a concept is able to easily recall the information and apply the knowledge of the concept in solving uh, novel problems. The goal of any teacher is to ensure that students learn meaningfully. Hence, the attainment of this goal is pursued through a variety of ways, including using pedagogical tools that best suit the context where the curriculum is being delivered. Throughout history, several pedagogical tools have been developed to help teachers navigate their way through the way of delivering quality education that can promote meaningful learning. In science education, for example, these tools are growing in number and quality as newer tools build on the strength of the older ones and indeed make an adjustment for the weakness of their predecessors. Student-centered learning prioritizes the interests and voices of students, making them central to the learning process. Now, this approach stands in contrast to traditional education, an approach commonly used in higher educational institutions as one of the leading forms of organizing the educational process, often referred to as teacher-centered learning. Now, this approach, on the other hand, encourages dependent learning and positions the teacher as the primary active participant while students play a passive role in receiving information. However, in student-centered learning, on the other hand, the learning process is collaborative with both teachers and students actively engaged in the content and the learning process itself, according to Moore and Zymond 2003. According to Moore and Zymond 2003, student-centered learning puts students' interests first, acknowledging student voice as central to the learning experience. This is in contrast to traditional education, also dubbed the teacher-centered learning, which promotes dependent learning and places the teacher as the primary active role while students are passive recipients of information. In contrast, students then learning is a collaborative learning where teacher students are actively engaged in the content and process of learning. Moreover, several authors have pointed out that most faculty members use strategies that support teacher-centered learning as it is easy to deliver uh, the prepared lecture where students sit and listen patiently. Sandu Afifi and Amara 2012 conducted a study on traditional didactic lectures and the role of lectures in improving student learning. They found that traditional lectures are often considered ineffective in terms of knowledge retention, student satisfaction, and knowledge development. As a result, there is a growing need for innovative strategies to make didactic lectures more efficient and conducive to deeper learning. These strategies often involve incorporating science and technology to create more engaging and effective learning experiences. These advancements can be applied to benefit students in diverse educational settings. Scholars have suggested that active engagement of the students in quality dialogue is important to the development of critical thinking. Thus, the next section of their paper 
details student-centered approach, which includes practices of teaching and the learning that are project-based, collaborative, foster knowledge building, and requires self-regulation and assessment. This paper talked about the creation of an ambience where students contributed significantly and co-created values in the process of learning. Ganderman 2013 in his study made an analysis between dance and reading a lecture, stating that reading a lecture is a kind of dance in which lecturers and uh, students or listeners observe, react and draw energy and inspiration from each other. In other words, to be efficient in a lecture, the students apply as much effort as the lecturer as dance partners. Otherwise, if only one partner paid effort, it would not work for both parties and the lecture would not give the desired effect. Moreover, learner-centered is often accompanied by a problem-based approach, where the problems are picked so as to robust the interests and needs of the learners. Some scholars have argued that student-centered learning is only feasible in small classes, while uh, classes with a larger number of students ranging from 100 to 1,000 or more cannot effectively implement this approach. I don't know what you think. However, uh, Exeter et al. 2010 challenged this notion by exploring teachers' perspectives in very large classes and demonstrating that teaching methods commonly used in small classes can also be adapted and applied successfully in larger ones. There exists a number of empirical evidence proving that students who are given the freedom to explore areas based on their personal interests and who are accompanied in their learning by a supportive understanding facilitator not only achieve superior academic results but also develop socially and grow personally. As it is, the quest of newer tools in an ending in the face of dynamism of society, of knowledge, of technology, and of learner characteristics. It is within this search mode that several improved pedagogical tools such as David Osbaugh's Advanced Organizer, Lev Vygotsky's Social Cultural Process, and Peter Okebukole's Cultural Techno Contextual Approach, it is E, are all found. Let me take this opportunity to introduce you all to the cultural techno contextual approach as one of the notable indigenous um, learner-centered approaches that can be adopted to enhance learning. Now, this approach takes into account that each student brings their unique cultural background, prior knowledge, and environmental context to the learning process. This approach aims to create a more engaging and effective learning environment by considering these factors. In contrast to traditional lecture-based teaching, where students play a passive role of uh, information recipients, CDCA rather promotes active participation and engagement. Learners are encouraged to take an active role in their own learning and technology and humor are incorporated to enhance the learning experience. CTCA acknowledges that learners can benefit from a variety of sources and experiences, recognizing that education is not solely dependent on the teacher for all information. The CTCA approach shifts the teacher's role to that of a facilitator who supports learners in acquiring knowledge and skills. It encourages active participation, discussions, and engagement among students, fostering an interactive and collaborative learning environment. CTCA also places strong emphasis on integrating real-life examples, practical applications into the learning process. This approach enhances the relevance and meaningfulness of the knowledge being taught, helping students see the practical value and applicability of what they are learning, leading to deeper understanding and retention of concepts. There are five major steps in implementing the cultural techno-contextual approach in the classroom. Step one, 
the teacher informs students ahead of time of the topic to be learned in class. The teacher will now ask each student to reflect on the indigenous knowledge or cultural practices and beliefs associated with a topic or concept. The students should be aware that such reflections will be shared in class with others and where the topics will be taught. And by so doing, the student can explore the use of mobile phones or other internet-based or internet-enabled devices to source for information for the study. Two, at the start of the lesson and after the introduction by the teacher, students are grouped into mixed ability mixes groups to share individual reflections on one, the indigenous knowledge, the cultural practices and the beliefs that were connected to the topic. And then these ideas are summarized and shared with, it, with each other. The teacher will then progress with the lesson. Three, the teacher progresses the lesson drawing practical examples from the immediate surroundings of the school. Such examples can be physically observed by the students to make the lessons real. The teacher should also uh, sprinkle delivery with some content-specific humor. Four, as the lesson progresses, the class is reminded of the relevance of the indigenous knowledge and cultural practices documented by the groups for meaningful understanding of the concept. Moreover, if misconceptions are available connected to the cultural beliefs, these are cleared by the teacher. And finally, at the close of the lesson, the teacher sends a maximum 320 character summary of the lesson via WhatsApp or SMS to the student. And that is how beautiful the CTCA demonstrates uh, students at their learning. Ejiru 2019 noted that while a number of methods have been explored to improve student-centered learning and performance in scientific explanation, very scant attention has been given to CTCA. Also, in appraisal of the CTCA, SANU 2015, noted that over the years, different instructional methods had been deployed by teachers to teach courses like logic gate. Yet, the outcome has not been encouraging as the students tended to perform woefully. In her study, the impact of CTCA was investigated on the achievement and attitude of students on logic gates and found a significant difference in favor of CTCA to lecture method. Moreover, there is an agreement with the findings of Akintola 2019 that CTCA had significant impact on students' achievement and attitude learning of hormone and kidney in biology. In another study by Ogumbao 2019, compared CTCA and the traditional method uh, of classroom instructional delivery and found a significant difference in favor of CTCA. In summary, CTCA transforms traditional teaching by promoting learner engagement, active participation, and practical application of knowledge to real life situations, resulting in more meaningful and effective learning outcomes. Now let's move on to the need for curriculum review. We have come a long way to realize that the way we were taught or the method that we were introduced to is pretty well in a way in terms of its significance and its potency to ensure that students advance and improve in their learning performance. So there is a clarion call for curriculum review and that is how it starts. Curriculum review is important because it meets diverse needs. Africa is a continent with enormous cultural, linguistic, and social variety. A standardized curriculum frequently fails to appropriately address these differences. And that is why curriculum revision can assist in tailoring learning experiences to the unique needs of individual students and communities. Two, globalization and technological advancement. Rapid globalization and technological improvement makes it necessary for graduates with a wide range of abilities. A curriculum revision might include current interdisciplinary studies as well as digital literacy to ensure students are equipped 
for the global job market. Three, enhancing relevance. It is very vague to have an outdated curricula which has no impact but can cause a misalignment between what students learn and what the labor market requires. Hence, curriculum revision is important on a regular basis to help bridge this gap, ensuring that education stays relevant and useful. Four, promoting critical thinking and creativity. The traditional educational style frequently places an emphasis on rote memorization. And I can be a victim of that. Many people are victims of rote learning. However, curriculum revision can move the emphasis to promoting critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity in pupils, all of which are necessary abilities in the 21st century. Let's now move on to discuss the significance of student-centric learning. First of all, it goes a long way to improve engagement. Active learning, project-based learning, and peer collaboration are examples of student-centered learning strategies that make learning more interesting. You know, students that are engaged are more likely to succeed academically. And therefore, it's important that we find a way to induce and feature more student-centered learning within our normal course of academic delivery. Two, tailored learning. Personalized learning paths are possible with student-centric approach. The students can pursue their hobbies and strength, which leads to a more in-depth grasp of courses. Three, enhancing knowledge retention. Students are more likely to recall and apply what they've learned when they have a say in their education. This results in higher retention rates. Four, promoting lifelong learning. Student-centered learning fosters a passion of learning and encourages students to continue learning outside of the classroom. Now, this is critical in an ever-changing environment. Five, preparation for the future. Fellow academics, in a world where adaptation and constant learning are required, student-centric learning provides students with the skills and mentality they need to thrive in every educational contest or any contest at all. Let me conclude at this point that promoting curriculum revision for students focused and student-centric learning is a critical step towards improving education quality in Africa. It meets the continent's unique requirements prepare students for the 21st century problems and ensures that education stays relevant and entertaining. African nations may empower their children to contribute effectively to local and global growth by promoting student-centered learning, ultimately contributing to a brighter future for the continent. I wish you all the best at this training workshop and I believe that you all leave with loathsome nuggets to make an impact in the learning delivery in your institutions. Thank you very much. I am Ajiban Ochodako and do have a nice day.